a question frequently asked regarding Y2Y 802.11 Wi-Fi modules such as W2S W0001 and W2CBW003 is how can we generate RF waveforms needed for compliance testing? A software application called LabTool or manufacturing tool can be used for this purpose. LabTool needs a driver known as a manufacturing driver and associated custom firmware. These are available primarily for laptops or desktops running Windows XP, but they can be ported to other processors running Linux or Windows CE. In this video, we will see operation of some key functions of LabTool. First, we need to install the manufacturing driver and firmware. I have copied all the files into a folder named LabTool on this computer. There is the original zip file and various other files as well. We are using a W2SW001 development board which is shown here. This needs to be plugged into the SDIO slot of a computer or a laptop. A word of caution here, many laptops have an SD memory slot but not all of them are SDIO compatible. SDIO is based on SD memory standard but has extensions and support for interrupts. When the board is inserted, it is recognized by Windows XP which guides us through driver installation. It's easier to choose the advanced method where we simply point to the sd8686.inf file. This is one of the files we copied earlier. To confirm proper installation, we go into the device manager via the control panel, which I'm doing here, and then observe that there is a new category called SDMFG test has been created and under that there is a Marvell SD8686WLAN SDIO adapter plugged in. This shows us that the card has been recognized and everything is going well. We'll now be running the lab tool itself. We simply go to the place where the labtool.exe file is stored and we just double click on it. As you can see it opens up a window with a menu of lab tool commands. Some of these are very useful. For example, command 88 that shows us the firmware version. You can use that to find out that there is firmware loaded and everything is going well. There is an enter key that is required at the end before you type the next command. Please keep that in mind. Another command that's useful is command 45 called read MAC address. When I type in 45, it shows us the MAC address that is burned into the EEPROM in the board. That is 00.19.88.2a.ee.5e in this board. So these commands allow us to verify that the basic functionality is working on this board. Now let's try something more fun. Let's type in a command that allows us to know if packets are being received. There are two commands here that we can use to verify that the receive part of the board is working well. That's command 31 and command 32. Command 31 allows us to set it up and command 32 allows us to display how many packets were received and if there were errors in the reception. Let's type in 31 and then I'll type in 32 after a few seconds and we will see that there are some packets that are being received. In this case, 72 packets were received and there were three errors in those packets. There are APs in the nearby vicinity which allow us to receive packets. Next, we will be going through some commands to generate RF waveforms. To observe them, we need either a vector signal analyzer made by companies such as Lightpoint, Agilent, or Andritsu, or a spectrum analyzer. Here we have a spectrum analyzer by Agilent. The three key settings are for center frequency, the span, and the amplitude. We need for channel 1 a center frequency of 2412 MHz or 2.4 GHz that is shown here. Then we have a span of 50 MHz for this waveform and then also a reference measurement of 20 dBm for measuring the amplitude of the signal. Getting back to lag tool again, we use command 22 with parameters 1 and 15 to set channel to 1 and power to 15 dBm. 
I will use that command now. Then we generate packets using command 25, 1, and 4 that generates packets at 11 megabits per second rate. As you can see, the waveform is changing. It is not stationary because packets come in and they go out. If I type in 25 and then a 0, that waveform will stop. Now we'll generate a different type of waveform called a continuous modulated waveform by typing in command 17 with the parameter 1 and then a 4. As you can see, the classic 11B waveform is shown on the spectrum analyzer. By typing in 17 and a 0, that will go away. Next is command 18, which generates a pure just the carrier. It does not generate any modulated waveforms, just the carrier. This is used typically in compliance measurements to measure the power that is being transmitted. You need to use an RF power meter for this purpose. In summary, we have shown that lab tool can be used to do basic diagnostics tests for 802.11 and also to produce waveforms useful for compliance testing. Do contact us at Y2Y for all your 802.11 needs. Our modules provide an easy way for you to enable Wi-Fi connectivity for your portable systems.